Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about all of the players that you guys need to keep an eye on for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 8 matchup versus the New York Giants. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into the first player I want to talk about that we should all keep our eye on, and it's wide receiver Scotty Miller, who right now, as it stands, actually leads the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in receiving yards. So, there you go. Pretty surprising fact. Uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin have both been dealing with injuries at one point or another this year. I did say it in the previous video, but Chris Godwin will not be playing in this game due to a fractured finger that he suffered versus the Las Vegas Raiders. So enter in again Scotty Miller, who overall has been pretty darn solid this year. In my opinion, he's been an overachiever, and he really does have chemistry with Tom Brady. That deep ball connection between the two works almost every time, so I imagine that's going to be happening at least two or three, maybe even four times in this game versus the Giants. As I said in the previous video, the Giants secondary is a little bit banged up. James Bradbury and Ryan Lewis are your starting cornerback for that New York Giants defense, so I really look for Scotty Miller to get a pretty decent amount of playing time. I also look for guys like Tyler Johnson, uh, maybe Cyril Grayson a little bit, and maybe Jadon Mickens, um, but definitely, definitely Scotty Miller. Uh, as also that Mike Evans is still dealing with some injuries of his own, that will also lend to Scotty Miller getting uh, more work. So overall, let's see how the young man does. He's been doing Really, really good so far this year. Again, I think he's been overachieving to a certain degree, but that's never a bad thing. It just means he's playing some really, really good football, and he has that connection with Tom Brady. So pay attention to Scotty. With the absence of Chris Godwin and also the nagging injuries to Mike Evans, Scotty should be getting a lot of targets thrown his way versus the Giants. The next player to keep an eye on is going to be Ryan Suckup, who has been pretty darn good this year. I think that he has made most of his kicks. I think he's only missed two. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments section below, but you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about our kicking situation for many, many years now, and this year, a lot of the general consensus that I've been getting is that people are now saying, hey, we're not afraid to see our kicker take the field anymore, which is honestly a blessing from God in my opinion because yeah uh it feels great not to have to worry about your kicker just point blank I mean Ryan Suckup has been doing some pretty darn good things this year he was coming off of that injury um from that Tennessee uh season last year where he was dealing with some knee injuries and things along those lines the Buccaneers did move on from Matt Gay and it still felt like there was a lot of uncertainty surrounding this Buccaneers kicker position to start off the year but Ryan Suckup slowly uh, but surely been able to cast out a lot of those doubters and prove a lot of people wrong and overall just be good at his job. So Ryan Suckup, keep it up, man. Keep on making the kicks. Keep on being great. We love you for it, my friend. Uh, the next player I want us all to keep an eye on is going to be Antoine Winfield Jr., which my friend Billy has dubbed with the nickname A&W, which I absolutely love. I think that it is a very fun nickname. But Antoine Winfield Jr. got his first career interception last week versus the Las Vegas Raiders, and he continues to have a pretty darn solid rookie season. It, there were a couple of weeks there where he was relatively quiet, but he kind of got back on track last week versus the Raiders. I really do feel like if he gets maybe two more interceptions at least, he is still going to be a very strong candidate for Defensive Rookie of the Year opposite Chase Young. And it always helps whenever your team's winning. The Washington Redskins aren't winning so far this year. The Buccaneers are winning a decent amount. So, yeah, Antoine Winfield Jr. has a lot going for him. He just needs to get a couple of more interceptions, make a couple of more plays. Uh, my friend Billy, again, made the point that he hasn't been blitzed as much. He's actually been back covering a lot more, which is interesting, and he's still been good at his job. He's just an overall great safety. We all know this. So pay attention to Antoine Winfield Jr. Maybe he can get another interception in this game versus Daniel Jones. Maybe he can get two. Maybe he can get three. Now that's a stretch, but I would like to think he could maybe at least get one interception here versus this New York Giants offense, and I would be perfectly fine with that. And maybe use him a little bit as a blitzer again as well. I know that the Buccaneers have been blitzing Levante David and Devin White a ton, and that has been working beautifully, but let's also try and get Antoine Winfield Jr. in there as well in terms of
of pass rush because he's also very good at that job as well. So yeah, pay attention to the young rookie who is right now trying to carve out a defensive rookie of the year campaign. The second to last player I want to mention here is going to be another safety. This safety is going to be Mike Edwards, who in my opinion, and I don't know if this is a popular opinion, an unpopular opinion. I saw a lot of you guys agree with me the last time I did mention this, but I feel like Mike Edwards is making a pretty decent case to be a starting defensive back out there, uh, maybe as a nickel corner, maybe even starting over a guy like Jordan Whitehead, but Mike Edwards, whenever he goes out there onto the field, he makes plays, and they even asked Bruce Arians about this in a recent press conference, and he said, we're just trying to find ways to get him out there onto the field. So, I don't know what that means. I don't think that would take away from the snaps of Antoine Winfield Jr. since he's playing really good, but... It could potentially take away from the snaps of Jordan Whitehead. That could be a very realistic thing that happens. So pay attention to that moving forward and how much playing time both Jordan Whitehead and Mike Edwards get in the uh, future games here for the Buccaneers. And that could start versus the Giants. We could start to see Mike Edwards overtake that uh, opposite starting safety role next to Antoine Winfield Jr. Because... He had an interception, which was absolutely beautiful. I forget the game, but he did have a one-handed interception that was absolutely amazing. I believe it was the Denver Broncos game. Then just a couple of weeks later, he had an interception against the Las Vegas Raiders, I believe. It was either Las Vegas Raiders or the Chargers, something like that. Uh, anyway, the point is that he had an interception. It got called back due to a penalty, but then he had a pass deflection that ended up getting intercepted by Antoine Winfield Jr. So overall, hey. Good stuff from Mike Edwards. He's playing really good football. That is the point I am trying to make here. I know I get some of the details confused sometimes, but Mike Edwards has been playing some good football. I think he deserves some more playing time, maybe even potentially starting over a guy like Jordan Whitehead. So pay attention to that moving forward. But anyway, guys, the last thing I want to mention here in terms of players that we need to watch, it's a little bit of a cheat thing, but I'm going to say the offensive line. And right now, as it stands, the offensive line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has had four games where they have allowed zero sacks on Tom Brady. Now, I imagine part of that is Tom Brady helping them in terms of his release, moving around in the pocket, his pocket awareness, all these types of things does help that offensive line. But I also want to say that the overall discipline for this offensive line the past two weeks has been amazing. They have had no penalties through the past two games versus the Raiders versus the Packers. That's awesome. Only one penalty on the offensive side of the football the last two weeks, and that was a false start on Tom Brady, which honestly was fine. That's not even a big deal. Um, overall, the offensive line has been great the past two weeks, and you guys know I've been saying it multiple, multiple weeks now in terms of the consistency with the offensive line. I expect really three and a half out of five of those guys to be consistent. I expect Ali Marpet, Ryan Jensen, and Tristan Wirfs now at this point to have a good week every single week. I expect Alex Kappa to really have a good week most of the time, and then Donovan Smith. But like I said, I will give credit where credit is due. And the entire offensive line, Donovan Smith included, has had a good past two weeks. So let's hope that they can keep it going. Again, you guys all know what my expectations are on a week-to-week -week basis with this offensive line. And I will give credit where credit is due. They have been playing good the past two weeks. Let's hope they can keep it up versus the New York Giants, who I said in the previous video, I think they have a very solid defensive line with Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Thompson, and Leonard Williams, but they are hurt at pass rusher a little bit. Kyler Frackles in there. I think that's how you say his name. He's been in there. He was with the Packers for a few years. He's been able to do some pretty decent things. Blake Martinez, middle linebacker. I think he's a very solid middle linebacker, and there are some other guys who are getting some pass rushing opportunities there for the Giants as well, but overall, that is one of their weaker units is their pass rushing so the offensive line should hopefully be able to hold up in terms of pass protection in run uh, blocking that is going to be another question entirely uh, let's see how they hold up in run blocking against those three just absolute humongous uh, defensive linemen again all three of those guys in my opinion are phenomenal run blockers and they're all along the same defensive line so Let's see how the Bucks run blocking holds up against them. That could be a very uh, interesting matchup here in this upcoming game. I did mention it in the previous video, obviously. But again, I want to reiterate that 
yeah, this could be a rough time for the Buccaneers running game uh, if those three guys get the upper hand on this Buccaneers offensive line. But again, we will just have to wait and see. But guys, that's really going to be it for this video in terms of all the players to keep an eye on. What do you guys think? What other players are you guys going to be keeping an eye on? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now.